Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar. Today's presentation is about AutoTurn, and it's going to be a training, an hour-long training, where I will be showing the basic functionality of AutoTurn for novice or beginner users. My name is David Hommel. I'm working as a product manager at Transoft's European office uh, by professional civil engineer. Um, and I'm part of the product management group. Jumping ahead um, into the quick agenda overview of today's presentation, most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, I would like to spend within the software to show you in software demonstration. And we will be looking into how to browse, browse vehicle libraries, select your vehicles, search uh, or apply certain filters, how to create basic vehicle simulations using the smart path tools, or looking into the other method to create vehicle simulation, what we call the adaptive simulation. Um, then we will be looking into the path control tool, a feature which, with which you can edit your simulations or look into various other editing tools. And also perhaps more in the beginning, we will look into display options and layer settings. I will also be covering the vertical simulations and animations. And at the end of the session, we will have hopefully some time left for questions and answers. All right, so let me quickly jump into my, into my presentation, in software presentation. So uh, what I have here is a base map of, um, this is just two T junctions uh, from somewhere in Europe. Uh, and this will be my base map. So this is needed when you start working with AutoTurn. You have to have some sort of a base map, some, some sort of a, a, a game plan uh, drawn up to um, certain units uh, correctly. Uh, this is drawn in meters. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to first to go to settings and in general, I can double check whether my AutoTurn auto units are matching the drawing units. So this will not be done automatically. Your CAD drawing units and your auto turn units might be mismatched. So this is one of the first things you would need to, to do in order to start designing. However, it's fairly obvious if, if this was on feet, then uh, starting my simulation would, would resolve in an oversized, enormously large vehicle. Uh, which is fairly obvious that something is wrong with the units. So if this is the case, I'm just going to go back, change it to meters. Maybe another thing to mention at the settings is that in the vehicle library display, this could be another area where you go into. Uh, AutoTurn now includes around 1,300 vehicles uh, modeled based on guidelines, national road design guidelines. Um, and this could be an overwhelming list. So as you see, uh, we have a, a significant list of vehicles. Um, now, if you find this list to be too overwhelming and you feel like you will never use vehicles from the United States or from Canada, you can just simply go ahead and untick a couple of these vehicles, uh, vehicle libraries, and then in that case, these will not appear in your list. So this is uh, just to simplify your vehicle uh, library view. I'm just going to select all in, in this uh, presentation. What I'm also going to do maybe is to talk a little bit about the properties. So again, this is something you would set maybe at the beginning or when you standardize your, yourself or your company on AutoTurn um, so that everyone who's using AutoTurn has the same um, sort of display settings. Um, and that's, that's going to uh, help you having a, a generic look, uh, a unified look within, within the firm. Um, so in AutoTurn, basically have three choices to do uh, as far as layer settings. You can use uh, the current layer. So that means your 
all return objects will be based on selected layer. You can use a specific layer uh, from a drop-down list, which is going to um, allow you to place, let's say, certain simulations in one specific layer or, or every simulation to a different layer. It really depends how you would like to use the software. And then you could also use individual layers settings. So when this is turned on, then if we go further to the categories below, for every single element, every every single auto turn element, uh, I can specify uh, the layer it's um, it's created on or it's placed on. So it could be the center line, it could be the vehicle outline, it could be the envelope and and different envelopes such as the vehicle body or the front tires, the rear tires. Everything I can specify to be based on a certain layer, on different layers, and I can set the uh, the color settings either to by layer or to a certain color in order to turn. So with that, you can really, really go into the details of displaying your um, your vehicle swap pass simulations. And also, when you set this up, you can save this as a property set. And once this is saved, you can distribute it uh, among your colleagues and then they can load it. So the entire organization is following the same uh, settings in terms of display. So having started with that, this was more of the boring part. Let's jump into the vehicles and, and check out certain vehicles available in the product. So I'm clearing all the filters what I have and um, and I'm just going to show you a few few tricks here how to maneuver, how to navigate your, yourself in the vehicle uh, browsing area. So as you see, I do have more than 2,300 vehicles, um, uh, possible vehicles in my list. This is around, when I show you a few filters standard vehicles what we call svls or standard based vehicles these are more than 1300 and these have been modeled based on national road or local as well road design um, standards or guidelines so some of these are uh, for for highway design others are for car park design uh, it's it's quite a big list also this is unique to Autotune Pro, but I would like to show it to you just, um, just for the sake of demonstration. Uh, we also have around 700 vehicles modeled based on manufacturer specifications. So these are real vehicles. You can find them uh, out on the street, real life vehicles. And we've modeled them accordingly to manufacturer data. Uh, and this is around 700 vehicles um offered at the moment for Autotune Pro users. For sake of the demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pick standard vehicles. And also what I would like to show is that um, there's a way to to filter these vehicles down um, a bit more. So let's say you would like to choose a certain vehicle according to a certain national standard. You can either filter based on the country. Uh, so if I clear all, that's the easiest maybe. And then I can go to look into vehicles from the Czech Republic. Okay, so basically we have two standards, an older one and a newer one. Um, if you untick this from the list, then you only see vehicles appearing from the new standard. And then based here, based on this uh, list, usually what I do is I sort them by length. And this is an easy way to me to overview what is in what kind of vehicles in the list and what is it what I'm looking for. If I go back and select all the vehicles, uh, maybe you would like to do some sort of a, uh, a filter, maybe based on regions. So if you're interested only in vehicles from Europe, then you can filter them down uh, 
basin region, and this is a list of the European vehicles. Again, it's still significant. It's uh, 560 vehicles at the moment, what I see. Maybe what you would also like to do is to search for a certain string. So if you say, um, if you type in tracker, which is, um, I believe it's called uh, for tra tracker of legger stands for semi-trailer in, um, in the Dutch guideline. I'm able to filter down all the vehicles which has this little string appeared in the list. Um, I can also say Arctic. So this will show anything which has Arctic or articulated in either in the list of, uh, of sorry, either in the name of the vehicle or in uh, the classification of the vehicle. So it's quite an easy task with using these filters to go ahead and search for um, specific vehicles. So what I'm going to do is I would like to choose some sort of a caravan, some sort of a, a, a passenger car and trailer combination. Um, and I would like to use a certain vehicle from the French standard. So I'm going to select this vehicle. And this will be the vehicle what I'm using. Uh, next step, what I can do is to lay out a vehicle simulation. Two methods we have. One is what we call the smart path tools, and the other one is what we call the adaptive simulation. Uh, maybe I'm going to start with the adaptive simulation first. So what I have here is a piece of polyline. So if I look at the object, this is a polyline on a certain layer, but the layer doesn't really matter. Um, and I can use AutoTurn to lay out a simulation along this polyline. So this is going to be the adaptive simulation method. If I click on this, and then I'm going to pick on the polyline, the pick the polyline. What this is going to do is uh, the area where I pick the polyline, that's going to um, influence the driving direction. So I am supposed to pick the polyline closer to the starting point. Uh, because I picked over here, my vehicle is driving up, uh, it's, it's taking a right turn, west, it goes westbound and then it goes up to northbound. And at the moment, it follows this polyline as being the center line for this simulation. I can either offset it to the right or offset it to the left as well. If I offset it to the left, I do have a setting to control that offset. Half a meter offset is going to be enough for me. And this created a simulation based on that single polyline with half a meter offset. You could also use smooth transitions. I will not demonstrate this at the, in, in this session. But that would elaborate, or that would uh, eliminate, sorry, eliminate certain issues such as this, where there is a break in the transition. So this means that uh, there is no steering transition calculated at this point, in order to follow uh, the curb line nice and, and parallel. The vehicle is transitioning very sharp, um, and this might not be realistic. However, what I can show here is that um, in this case, you can also do a swap of the vehicle. So what you can do here is that I can go back and maybe choose another vehicle. I can either choose any of the any other passenger car caravan trailer uh, combination or just to be a little bit more on the safe side to see the different results, I can choose this, this camper van, which is just a single unit rigid vehicle. So if I hit OK, swap the vehicle, and this is going to be my new vehicle uh, following this, um, this piece of line. Also at the bottom, what you see is that there is an option to link the turn simulation to path geometry. 
So if this is linked on, then this simulation will be dynamically attached to that piece of polyline, which I use as a reference. And what that means is that if I created the simulation and then just zoom in, slightly adjusting the, uh, the polyline, that will also make the simulation to be adjusting. So I can do small tweaks and small edits of the simulation. Um, so this is called the adaptive simulation. Another method what we do have is the set of smart path tools. And what I'm going to do is just to click the 2D art path and then I'm going to um, create a simulation maybe up maybe to this area with the smart path tools. So first, when you use this tool, you have different possibilities to align the vehicle. So one method, and I'm just going to do it over here, is to click the location of the vehicle and then rotate your cursor and by moving your cursor you rotate the vehicle. So this is how you pick the orientation of the vehicle. So nicely you can align it parallel to the lane and you can start creating your simulation. So the smart path tools will always have this floating type of window um, uh, appeared when you use this when you simulate the vehicle. First of all, let me turn off the preview arc path and just show you how this tool works. So this will now dynamically follow my cursor. The vehicle will dynamically follow my cursor up until a certain point from which it is not able to follow it anymore that tight. If that happens, it will try to follow it as much as it, as it can. And this is, uh, this is based on certain settings in the smart path tools. So one of the settings is speed. This is now 10 km per hour what I'm using. If I decrease it down to one km per hour crawling speed, I will be able to turn tighter. Okay, so my vehicle is able to turn tighter because it goes slower. Also, if I decrease it down, decrease it, uh, sorry, increase it up to 20, then what you will see is that again, my vehicle is not able to turn it very, uh, very tight, not able to follow my cursor. So this is speed dependent. Uh, and this is mainly the, the, the main benefit of using the smart path tools over the adaptive simulation. Here you have control over the speed. Uh, and that really matters. Um, you do need to pay attention to the speed settings and you do need to choose a speed which is realistic to your simulation environment. Going back to maybe 10 km per hour, what I can also show to you is that you do have a setting whether to allow turning the wheel from stop, meaning, meaning if that option is turned on, pay attention to the vehicle which is hatched, the starting position. I'm allowing the driver to steer while the vehicle is stopped uh, like that. I'm even able to turn even tighter, but this is, in some scenarios, this is not realistic. Um, my advice, what I tell all the time, is that on public road, do not allow this to happen. On private road, uh, it's okay uh, to uh, to allow this. So to put it uh, in other perspective, highways, junctions, urban environment on, on public road, do not have this turned on. On, on car park locations, uh, loading bays, uh, maybe even um, bus terminals, you could have that uh, turned on. Uh, so with that said, also, what I wanted to show to you is the preview arc path. The preview arc path is a tool which allows me to see what is the leftmost and the rightmost direction my vehicle is, is able to steer. Uh, and this is really important because there could be cases when the vehicle already has to start counter steering 
but it will not be able to do so because it passed beyond the, that point. So I'm just going to do a little simulation by clicking to, to points in the drawing. I'm introducing constraints. Um, and by doing that, I'm able to simulate this vehicle. And maybe this is the point where I already have a good use of the preview arc path. I see that with this speed, this certain speed, 10 km per hour, which is, by the way, too low for this simulation. Um, you can see that this is the point where I would need to start counter steering to the left so that the vehicle can, um, can take that chicane maneuver or S-turn maneuver. Um, if you've made a mistake, let's assume, then there are two ways to undo it. One is just to click this undo button uh, down here. The other one is just to click in the wheelbase of the tractor, so into the wheelbase of the front vehicle, first vehicle. If I do that, this is going to undo the last section of the simulation. And I do have again possibility to carry on simulating my vehicle further. Also, what you see here is um, you also have an option to force a straight line. So meaning that the vehicle will not be able to steer, you will be able to force a straight line. That's potentially a good option on longer, longer stretches, such as here. And also what you can do is you can detach a trailer. This is more um, useful when you have loading dock scenarios where you would like to simulate a semi-trailer reversing back to the loading bay, detaching the trailer and only the tractor leaves the station. Uh, this is something more advanced. I will not demonstrate it today. Also, what you can do is you can have an eye on the radius, on the current um, on the radius of the current section of the path um, as, you, as you simulate. So pay attention to this value. This is going to be the vault-to-wall radius of the actual section. And as you see, eight and a half meter is the minimum for my vehicle. This is a drop-down. So you can also see center line, curb to curb, or inner turn radius if you would like to do, uh, to do so. Wall to wall is usually um, a good value to, to, to look at. And also last but not least, here you do have an option to limit the section's minimum radius. So if I say I would like to limit it to 12 meters, then I will not be able to go beyond 12. Look at the radius next to wall to wall. This will physically limit uh, my minimum radius to 12 meters. Um, in cases like this, what you can also do is to either you can just go ahead and start picking a few points so that you define this corner maneuver. This is one option to do so. And this is what most of our users would do. However, you have, you have better options as well. Um, let me show you first what does this mean. So now what I did is I created this simulation of the vehicle. And I did that by picking certain points in the drawing which the vehicle has to go through. And this is called the 2D arc path. Uh, when I would like to edit this simulation, the path control tool will allow me to do that. I can select the simulation by picking any of the simulation objects. And what this would do is that you will have certain grips appearing on the simulation. With these grips, you can move a certain node 
let's say I'm going to move this node over here. And with that, I'm able to fine tune the simulation. But as you see, if I move this node, uh, the end of the um, at the end of the simulation, the direction, the orientation of the vehicle changes. Also, what you can do is you can add a new node, meaning you can add a new position or a new location the vehicle has to go through. Of course, here I only have very narrow wiggle room but if i maybe move this node a little bit beyond then i would be able to have a little bit more room to fine-tune this part of the simulation but as you see moving one node would have an effect on another part of the simulation. And this is because AutoTurn, by using the, the 2D arc path tool, it does not understand um, that this is a simulation which has to stay within this uh, paved area. It only understands that this simulation has to hit these points. Okay, so you would need to edit these points and also what you can do is you can delete a node at any any uh, point what i'm going to do is uh, first of all just bring back my simulation to the front and i'm just going to uh, delete this piece of simulation and create something new so what i would like to do is go ahead use the smart path tools to align uh, the vehicle, I'm going to use a different option. Instead of picking a point and the direction, I'm going to pick a geometry. So when you do that, then you can also pick the driving direction. And when this is done, if this is a curve, your vehicle will already be nicely aligned uh, along that piece of geometry what you picked so best is to pick a, uh, a polyline because then you can move this vehicle along the the road and freely pick the geometry this was a, a shorter piece of line so i only um, it, it only gives me direction to a certain point but it helps me to get started so this is my uh, first position also little trick if this simulation has, has not been placed uh, or has not been created yet, just the starting point has been defined, click in the wheelbase of the first vehicle and then you will be able to move the starting point, adjust the starting point. Also, if you wish, you can also edit um, the trailer articulating angle by clicking into the wheelbase of the trailer and you can freely define the articulating angle of the trailer. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into this chicane area. And here, instead of picking a few points, I would like to turn into what we call a corner path. So corner path is, you can, you can, uh, select it or start using it either by selecting the smart path tool in the top of the dialog box or by picking the corner path um, tool from the ribbon so when i pick corner path this will automatically allow me to to create a corner of a certain sweep angle the sweep angle you can either put it Numer numerically so i'm just going to put uh, 45 degree 45 degree angle um, or you can pick any piece of line from the drawing and that's going to influence your sweep angle so this is a lot more easier way to uh, to create your simulation and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click a point over here and then i will finish it by adding 
an extra section, maybe two points, just to straighten it out. So this was a lot easier way to create my corner maneuver. And the main benefit comes when we click path control. So in path control, notice that in the corner path area, I do have different grips appearing. One grip is, is going to be going to allow me to introduce some oversteer. What we call, so there's going to be some steering outside from uh, the tight uh, radius of the turn. And I'm also able to introduce that. Of course, I'm in conflict with that traffic island, so I will not do this. But what I can also do is to change the radius. So Auditor now understands that this is a corner with 90 something uh, sweep angle. It will keep that angle. It will only allow me to adjust the radius. And I can do so, so that I, I have a realistic simulation. So when you use the smart path tools, in combination with the path control tool, it's just a lot easier to influence your, your final uh, vehicle swap path analysis uh, object, and just to have it fine tuned. It's, it's highly possible that you don't have the, the perfect simulation at the beginning, but you have somewhat a good simulation, then you can still go back to path control and you can uh, use the grips to fine tune the simulation. Also, you can use these grips to lengthen the simulation, for instance. So if for whatever reason you would like this simulation to be this long, you can do that. Right click and then you're done with um, editing this simulation. Also, the third, uh, the third type of, of pa uh, smart path tools is what we call the oversteer corner path. So again, I'm just going to use the same vehicle, going to align it nicely along this piece of geometry. This is a very narrow road, especially for this wide uh, trailer. And what I would like to do is I would like to simulate uh, a right turn maneuver. So what I can do is to pick, pick a piece of line. Let's see if I'm able to pick a line. Pick a piece of line. And I would like to go southbound. southbound. So the lane I would like to end up in is the outer lane. What I can do is to either place this simulation like this and then using the path control tool to edit the oversteer section or the oversteer parameters. Or what I can also do is to click oversteer on the top, pick that piece of line, and now by editing the entry and the exit of set parameters, I'm able to influence this simulation. So let's just see with one meter oversteering, we're almost there. There's a little bit more oversteering needed at the exit. So this is going to be one and a half, maybe. So with one and a half meter or 1.75, we should be able to create a nice oversteer simulation. Of course, this is a very tight junction, so there's some risk over here. Um, but if this is an occasional movement, what has to happen, it's, it's possible to do that. Again, going back to the path control tool, I can either adjust the offsets freely, or I can completely remove it. And then this is now a normal corner path. So you can freely go back and forth between corner and, and oversteer corner path maneuvers. And also you can adjust the radius. All right, going further on the editing tools, few other options are here as well. 
One is that you can place a vehicle outline to any of the simulations. So this is just going to show you um, or going to allow you to display um, the vehicle trajectory a lot better when you just place the vehicle outline to, to anywhere along the, along the path. If you would like to delete that, you can also pick delete vehicle and then click inside of that placed vehicle and that's going to delete it. Further down, you have the possibility to continue a simulation. When I do that, I do have three options. Continue this, the existing simulation. That's going to take this existing simulation and then I can uh, start driving it further. Copy this existing simulation and continue the copied version or continue as new. So the continue as new, what, what that means is that this is going to be the end point of this simulation is going to be the starting point of my new simulation. This is interesting, so I'm just going to show you that. And what I'm going to do maybe is to maneuver, a left turn maneuver to here. So this created another simulation. This is just this big. It used the end, uh, the end station and the end orientation of the last simulation as the starting point of the new. Okay, and what you can also do is to delete the last section of the simulation. So if you remember this new simulation I created by defining two points at the end, if I just click this, it will delete that section of the simulation and, and define the simulation like this. It's effectively the same as if I, if I had this point, as if I went ahead to continue and then I hit undo. It's going to do that in just one step. And then also you do have a regenerate option. This is useful when either you change the vehicle parameters for custom vehicles and you would like to regenerate your simulation so that it takes into account the new vehicle parameters uh, or there's an issue with the simulation which you would like to refresh. Looking into these simulations there are a few few things I would like to show. Um, one is the settings, the, the display settings of it. So if I go to properties and I would like to move this window to the side, you see that currently we have a yellow hatching of the vehicle body envelope. We have the body envelope displayed and we also have the maximum width displayed. Uh, so this is the vehicle body envelope turned on with the max option, max width option turned on. We don't have any front tires or rear tire tracks displayed. If I wanted, I can do that. I can turn on front tires, rear tires. And I don't need to recreate the simulation. I can just update an existing simulation with these settings. If I click update, and I'm just going to pick this simulation, it created those front and rear tire tracks. Um, it's currently quite hard to see them. So let me go into the palette and instead of light gray, I'm going to use magenta. And for this as well, this will be magenta, but maybe this is going to be dashed. When I do that and update, refresh these settings, you see that it's a lot easier to see now. Dashed lines are the rear tires. Front lines are the front tire tracks. <clears throat> you can also use clearances. So you can apply a safety clearance from the front or from the rear tires of a certain value. It's a bit hard to show or it, it, it would be a bit cluttered if I showed you uh, for the tires. Therefore, I'm going to show you for the body. 25 centimeter sounds reasonable. I'm just going to update. And there is this dashed um, bluish line where you see 
a clearance for the vehicle body created. Okay, so this is just to have a little bit more um, safety space around the vehicle. And for any of these, you can turn on maximum width. So I'm just going to turn on the max width for the clearance, hit update, and that's going to be now calculated for the clearance. Regarding the hatching, you see that in hatching 2D simulations, and you do see that there is, I have different options to hatch. I can hatch the vehicle body, but I can also hatch the, uh, the body clearance. So I'm going to hatch the body clearance, and the hatching is going to be cyan with a transparency of 55 percentage. Again, updating the simulation. The yellow hatching is now gone. I only have the cyan hatching. Maybe the transparency isn't large enough, so I can even make it a little bit more transparent. Uh, and also what you notice is that we do have an option to separately hatch reverse maneuvers. So I haven't even talked about reverse yet. So let me just go back. Uh, I'm gonna do vehicle body, these settings, and I will do a little maneuver here, which is a car park area. So what I'm going to do is I go back to the vehicles, I'm going to clear out all the filters. I'm going to search for a specific vehicle. In order to pro, you do have these manufacturer-based vehicles. I'm going to use uh, the XC90 uh, Volvo SUV, fairly large vehicle, a good one for uh, a car park environment. And what I would like to do is to show this vehicle just to uh, drive in. Maybe it's going to pull into one of these uh, turning area. And then after that, I'm going to try reversing back. So reversing is Switching on reverse, you have two possibilities. One is that if you move your cursor behind the, the rearmost axle group, auto turn will automatically change to reverse. And also, what you see is that the preview arc path, this is how it is turned off. This is how it, when it's turned on, you see the leftmost and the rightmost uh, directions when reversing. Or, Different option is that you have this little switch gear. So with this, you can switch to reverse and then reverse is automatically calculated or, or activated. Okay, so it's not the most challenging. I'm just going to reverse back in here. And finish this simulation. So as you see, forward maneuver and reverse maneuvers, they are displayed differently. Okay, if I continue again, continue from existing simulation, then I will be able to, um, to leave this site again. And then, oops, one wrong step, maybe undo it. Then what I can do is just to show you that uh, for the forward maneuver, it's going to be displayed again uh, with, with the forward uh, section. So this is again quite a, quite a good way to display your, uh, or, or differentiate your forward and reverse maneuvers in an easy way. Okay, so we've created quite a few um, simulations. What you can do is to, document what was the vehicle you used for each simulation. So this is 
the insert profile option and all you need to do is select the simulation you would like to document and that is going to create and, and insert this little profile of the vehicle with the vehicle's name. So there are a few vehicles I used. I'm just going to place them. If this is a little bit more, a little bit smaller, then I can just scale it up nicely. Another thing that you can do is to animate your simulations. So what I'm going to do maybe is to animate this maneuver over here. So it's the animate um, command up on the ribbon. What it's going to do is it's going to animate your vehicle simulation and you have a few settings. You do have control over the speed. However, this is not um, in kilometer per hour or in any kind of unit. This is a setting based on your computation power. Um, if you would like Auditorn to simulate it um, uh, quicker, then increase this, uh, this value. If you would like to have a smoother but slower simulation, decrease the value. It's going to depend a lot on your computation power and on the heaviness of your drawing. Choosing five, this is the animation I end up with. 2D only. This is my vehicle entering to that, uh, parking to that bay. You can also hide the simulation and have this vehicle simulated back to that space as well. At this stage, you can either use any kind of screen recording uh, software to record an AVI or any kind of MP4 or uh, any other video type, or you can use a record AVI option. So this is built into the software. You have export options. It's going to be a little 10 second video, and it's also uh, going to create a little video um, to your hard drive. Okay, animation would work with any other simulation as well in my drawing. And last but not least, what I would also wanted to show you, I need to switch drawings for that, is the vertical simulation. So in this drawing, this is an architectural drawing of a, an underground parking garage. It's a one-to-one -one ratio cross-section of my garage and the ramp area. And what I would like to understand is, is there any ground clearance issues or, or are there any um, overhead clearance issues with, by using some sort of a vehicle? Uh, so what I did is that I combined the, the polyline, which represents the ramps, and also the polyline, which represents the ceilings. And I copy-pasted them under each other few times so that I can explore multiple vehicles or um, and, and just to understand if, if any of these vehicles have any issues. So what I'm going to do is again, perhaps the vehicle I've used, the XC90, is a good one to start with. Um, I'm going to use the vertical simulation option and pick this piece of polyline which represents, uh, again, the ramps, the, um, the ramp surface. Now, what we see is that with certain settings, current settings, we don't seem to have any issue. Definitely not with the ground clearance because this is an SUV type of vehicle, but also seems that the overhead clearance seems to be okay. I'm going to increase this clearance ever so slightly. And at some point, I do have a conflict warning. 
So conflicts will be um, part of the next training sessions, but I can already tell you that there are certain objects in order to turn which uh, can result in a conflict warning, automatic conflict warning. As long as these objects are on a certain layer uh, set in order turn, TS obstacle in this mo in this case, transfer solutions obstacle. If these are on that layer, auto turn continuously checks them for conflicts. And if this if this is in conflict with the vehicle path, you will have a visual uh, written conflict message. Uh, however, this is with 40 uh, centimeter clearance, so it might be a little bit of, of uh, too much clearance. Also, what you can sh uh, what I can show to you is I can turn off the top body and the bottom body clearance. It's a bit hard to see, but you see the uh, the gray line. That's the, the vehicle body envelope. I can uh, maybe turn it to blue. This is my vehicle body envelope. This is the swept area by the vehicle. Interestingly, what you can also do is go ahead and swap the vehicle while you're still in the command. So we know that for the Volvo XC90, this is not a big deal. Let's check another vehicle with the same with the same top view uh, or top clearance. It seems like that this is even lower and I would need to increase it a little bit more so that I have a conflict. So again, this vehicle has even less issue, less of an issue with the overhead clearances. Um, and also what I would like to show you is a ground clearance analysis. So I'm just going to select a different vehicle. This time it's going to be something with a very low ground clearance, maybe maybe a sports car. So again, because I'm using Autoturn Pro, I do have these, these nice vehicles created, but also this one, for instance, is a custom vehicle, so you could also have it in Autoturn. Um, in any case, I'm going to select this low ground clearance sports car, and maybe I would like to have five centimeter of ground clearance. Seems that I have no issue. If I would like to have maybe seven, let's see where I start to have issue. At eight centimeter ground, ground clearance, I do have an issue. Uh, of course, where the ramp is changing slope, this vehicle will be in conflict with that. So again, this type of analysis you can use um, for not only for architectural designs, but also for driveway designs, um, also maybe for uh, ramps involved in um, loading bays or also in uh, bus terminals. And what I would also like to show to you is that the animation tool is is available for these type of maneuvers as well. So you can have this vehicle animated as well throughout the pass. All right, so as I see, we're running out of time. This was the last, uh, last field I, I wanted to cover. Um, I also would like to talk a little bit about our current summer campaign. So until the 31st of, uh, of August, we are running a campaign on, on Autotune Pro. So this is for either for brand new clients or for existing Autotune clients. If you are an, uh, a brand new client, you have 25% discount um, on Autotune Pro. Or if you are an existing Autotune client, you have 40% discount on Autotune Pro. Haven't really covered Pro uh, in this session but you did see the manufacturer-based vehicles uh, and you also have full 3D vehicles, uh, bicycle simulation, uh, which is a very interesting topic nowadays with the current urban design trends. Um, and you also have two other tools, Inspect Simulation and IntelliPath. So if you're interested in that, let us know. Uh, you can just contact us referring to the webinar offer. Um, 
and we will be happy to give you the discounted price up until 31st of August. What's coming up next is still, still auto turn, but some of the functions which are for experienced users, more advanced functionality. So this is going to be a session by my colleague Richard Buck. Uh, he's going to deliver this on the, 20th, uh, on the 12th of August. And as you see on the agenda, you have the preview vehicle path, slight introduction to vehicle creation, rear steering axles, conflict analysis, load shapes, sight lines, great templates and speed profile reports. So lots of lots of interesting things to cover. If you were somewhat familiar with the things I said today, maybe this is your, your session. Um, make sure to register on the website. Uh, so on transfersolutions.com, uh, look for the events, then webinars, and you will find us there. And also I wanted to show our contact details. So if you would like to get in touch with us, either on phone or, uh, or per email. These are the contact details. You can reach out to us. And this is the moment I can look into answering some of the questions came in during the session. So I'm going to look into the questions. Also, if you have to run um, many thanks for spending this one hour with, with us. I really do appreciate it. I hope you found it useful. When you leave the session, there will be a survey you're prompted to fill out. We would really, really appreciate if you, if you gave us feedback. This is how we can target the topic of these webinars, tailor them and, and keep on improving them. So when you leave, please fill out the survey. And many thanks for uh, spending this one hour with me. And then in this session, uh, or, or uh, in the current moments, I will just look into the questions I see. My colleague, Theo, has been busy answering some of the questions in the background. Yes, so maybe there's a question from, from Ian who is asking if I can add a roof rack to a car or is there, is, is there any built in already? This is going to be a good one for, um, for the next uh, session for the advanced functionality. But in auto turn, you do have um, loads in the software and I'm, I'm happy to show to you uh, actually. So what I can do, I'm just going to go back maybe to my Volvo XC90. Going to the details and in the details of it, I will be able to create a load. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place it to the outline of the vehicle. I will place, draw up a little rectangle representing the roof rack. Let's say something like this. And all I need to do is to go to vehicles, go to vehicle details. In the roof line data, I would need to notice the height. The height is 1.78 at the moment. Then I go at the bottom, define loads. And here I can define a new load any type of closed polyline I can pick, and then I can pick a datum point on the vehicle. So this is the other way around, so I would need to rotate it by 180 degree. Little bit, little bit is to the side, so I can maybe move it by 10 centimeter. And this is going to be, a 3D only load, let's say, or let, let's put it 2D and 3D. So the Z datum point, 1.78 was my roof height. And the height of it is going to be maybe 35 centimeters. Hit OK. 
with OK. So when I use this vehicle on the vertical simulation, then as I see, this already includes the roof rack, and this has obviously a ground clearance issue. So even if I don't display the clearance, this vehicle has a ground clearance issue. And if I would like to demonstrate it a bit more, then I can maneuver it to any of these positions. And that is how the roof rack or anything, any kind of load is displayed on top of this vehicle. I now see in hindsight that I could place a little bit backwards this roof rack, but this is very quickly how you can do it. All right, so I do see some other questions regarding the Revit version. The Revit version does not include this 3D functionality, unfortunately, so this is uh, in the CAD version only. And I think uh, the rest of the questions are going a bit more to the detail. Um, I, I do my best to answer all of these questions uh, written in an email. Um, so with that said, once again, thanks for uh, for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Goodbye.